But yes, I mean, I would have, uh, I wouldn't have done the galley quite like this if I'd been doing it. Right, here we go. One black coffee with no sugar. Thank you. One white coffee with no sugar. Thank you very much. Chocolate chunky cookies and uh, crunchy cookies, extremely chocolatey. Now, now what is she? You call her a nobby? Nobby, yes. How do you spell she, it? She's, she's a Manx nobby, uh, N O B B Y, uh, and the name nobby applied to Lancashire fishing boats, Isle of Man fishing boats, and Cornish fishing boats, which all apparently they all fished in the Irish Sea, following herring, mackerel, and so on. Um, they were drift fishing. You're not quite sure how old she is. No. So tell me, tell me about that. Uh, well, the, the the only thing we do know for sure is that the last Manx Nobby was launched in 1917 uh, on the Isle of Man. She's uh, 37 and a half, 38 feet over the deck, 50 feet over the bowsprit, uh, 11 and a half feet wide. The draft at the bow is three feet, and underneath the cockpit, it's five foot six. Uh, and she weighs 13 and a half tonnes. And how, how many berths has she got? She got five berths, there's two in the Vauxhall, uh, and three in the cabin, um, two, two city berths and a quarter berth. Uh, uh, the, the only slight drawback to the fact that she's got a, a canoe stern, which is good, good at sea, is that inside there's only the space that you'd normally find on a 33 foot boat. She's, got, she's a gaff cutter the rig, uh, like most gaffers, um, but we think that she originally had uh, a two-masted lug rig when she was a fishing boat. Uh, so in the 1890s, early 1900s, they were beginning to build fishing boats as gaff cutters because um, they were running out of fish in the, in the Irish Sea uh, and if you only had, to, you could sail a gaff cutter with two people and a boy um, whereas you needed five people to sail a two-masted lugger uh, and so of course the, the smaller amount of money went, went further uh, if you had fewer crew. She's a gaffer, she's uh, built on the hull of a fishing boat, which means that she looks after you. Um, the, the hundred years or so of development of, of fishing boats and by the time Harbinger was built, uh, they knew exactly what they were doing and uh, because the fishermen went out uh, every day or every night, uh, 365 days in the year, they needed a boat that would uh, look after them as well as bring the fish back quickly and so on. So uh, that's always attracted me as being the right sort of boat for uh, going sailing. So below, yeah, she's one century possibly, yeah, and above, she's it's a, a different, different one. One. Yes. So yes. inside, what you can see inside uh, dates from a major refit between 1975 and 1985. Uh, the hull outside is, is now the only bit that's 100 years old um, because it had a new deck, a new interior. So she started life as an open fishing boat, uh, is that correct? Probably, yes. There, there, there would have been, where we're sitting, would have been the fish well, um, which, is, which is why this is the way it is. Um, come to that in a minute. Um, but there would, right in the stern, there would have been a little cabin uh, just in front of the tiller uh, and with a stove in it and, and the boy would spend the evening after they'd left, uh, left uh, harbour uh, cooking supper. Mike, what is it that's so, like, so special about this boat that, that, you, that, that, that attracted you to her? Well, uh, I've always liked gaff, gaff rig boats right. uh, from first getting a, a, a wayfarer dinghy. Uh, I've read about 
you know, wanted to, you know, cruising boats and that sort of thing. And my first boat was a 24 foot gaffer because uh, I decided that gaff rig was, was the best rig for looking after you when you were at sea. What does she sail like? She sails like most gaffers. Uh, we have a phrase, gentlemen don't go to windward um, because gaffers don't go as, as tight to windward as modern boats do. But uh, by going, coming off the wind a bit um, and you, you sail a little bit first, faster but you can sail as quickly and you make a few attacks doing that. Um, and we can get into, you know, get to a particular upwind place uh, in much the same time as modern boats. So, uh, but it's much more comfortable. And we even tack down because, again, that's uh, because the main sail is much bigger than the head sails. Uh, she doesn't. You can't goose wing uh, like you would with a modern boat. Um, so it's much easier to come off the wind and you're not watching for a jibe all the time. It's better for the helmsman. How many of these Manx nobbies are there around? As far as I'm aware, there are four, including Harbinger. Uh, there's one in Falmouth currently, and I think there are two on the Isle of Man. And how can you tell that she's a Manx nobby as opposed <laughs> to another nobby somewhere else? Well, um, various people have said they thought maybe she was a, a Scottish fishing boat. Um, there, there was a guy in the 1940s who wrote a large tome about all the fishing boats around the coast of the UK uh, and published in 1947. And his chapter on Manx Nobbies and the pictures that are in that book uh, show that the Scottish um, block fine skiffs they were. They were mostly clinker built, whereas the Isle of Man boats were carvel, which is what Harbinger is. Uh, they're the only other fishing boat, UK fishing boat, that has the very steep stern post, uh, which comes down at an angle of about 45 degrees. Uh, so uh, are they the points that make it a nobby, that, that you would that, instantly recognise it as a nobby? I, I think, yes, people, people would. Uh, it's a combination really of the, of the rounded stern, there's no transom, it's a, it's a round stern, um, and the fact that she's carvel, uh, the fact that she probably was launched as a lugger, um, the fact that she's would, would, would point to an Isle of Man fishing boat. Thank you.